For over 25 years now, Square Enix's most treasured and beloved series, Final Fantasy, has managed to raise the bar ever so slightly in the realm of epic tales. But Square Enix's Final Fantasy XII is without a doubt one of the more controversial ones among the longtime fans of the series. Originally released on March 16, 2007 in Japan and October 31st in North America, Final Fantasy XII marks its stamp as the last Final Fantasy game for the PlayStation 2's generation and before the even more debatable Final Fantasy XIII. Though mixed reactions have been stirred amongst players, Final Fantasy XII still manages to retain the essence of its name and predecessors. The game's narrative and setting takes a trip back to more of the roots of the series, as you the player traverse the indigenous land of Ivalice. Prepare to see monsters of the variety as well as unique races and classic Final Fantasy creatures within the universe of this game. The story this time around has less to do with that of romance and more to do with the socio-political future of Ivalice, as well as a coming-of-age story for Princess Ash, the game's primary protagonist. Unlike previous Final Fantasy games, however, 12 is unable to really convey inspiration or great emotional trauma from some of the main characters. If anything, you'll find some of the other supporting characters and villains to be more interesting than the ones that you play as. But of course, you'll find a satisfactory amount of real story drama within the characters. He's dead. The narrative mainly focuses on the backdrop, plotting, and politics of Ivalice as the story progresses, and less to do with the heroes themselves. This itself is considered one of the more unfavorable changes among some of the fans of Final Fantasy, but is regarded as a necessary change in 12 by others, as this aids the story flow in a more natural and interesting fashion, without having to be diminished or watered down by too many miscellaneous scenes or filler. The confusing protagonist spotlight perhaps might be the only piece of the tale that throws off some players, as Vaughn can easily be questioned as to whether or not he should be considered the main character. One of the more controversial changes to the series is the gameplay of Final Fantasy XII, which without a doubt received mixed answers from its core audience. But surely, Final Fantasy XII's battle system screams innovation, which is definitely a welcomed idea to those who tire of seeing the same thing for the last 25 years. Doing away with the classic basic fighting from older games, XII introduces a mixture of active time battles along with real-time movements and transitions to attacking and various other actions. One of the more interesting pieces to the puzzle that is combat is the Gambit system. Gambits are collected through leveling up and purchasing them from the Gambit shop, which can then be assigned to any one of your fighters so as to automate specific strategies and paradigms. The reward is in piecing together the ultimate Gambit system itself, as you may find that producing the most quick and efficient strategies against some of the tougher enemies of the game require a well-placed Gambit or two. The only drawback is when a specific gambit does not at all fit a certain situation. But it's also nice to simply manually control your characters again in order to correct their mistakes. Character growth is now managed by the License Board, a more open-ended version of the Final Fantasy X Sphere Grid. The License Board is huge and will take some time to really conquer. But in due time, your characters can learn just about anything the game has to offer, from wielding a gigantic samurai sword to summoning a tornado. Through this system, character customization really opens up and feels almost as free as Final Fantasy Tactics. Unfortunately, this unique feeling is outlived by the time your characters have learned almost everything on the board, as they end up all similar to each other in the end. Final Fantasy XII plays as you would expect, like a Final Fantasy game. This of course calls for gigantic fantasy-like fields crawling with some of the most deadliest creatures known to Ivalice. This makes exploration and traveling a bit on the treacherous side, but fun in some cases, and by the time you gain control of your airship, the Strahl, revisiting places and going to other regions where the player was too weak to travel in before keeps things interesting. Final Fantasy XII is certainly one of the harder games of the series. This in turn calls for multiple extra hours put in in order to level up so as to compete with the monsters of your next dungeon. 
Though difficulty and challenges aren't a deterrent of fun, spending too much time grinding it out may turn away some players, or at the very least, make you put down the controller for a few days. Last but not least, the monster hunts, treasure looting, and additional espers that the game offers adds in loads of hours for those who are completionists. Although one might feel a bit bored after spending some time grinding, there will always be something extra for you to do that actually holds some purpose. In conclusion, Final Fantasy XII certainly has reinvention and innovation put into it. Though the changes might be considered as betrayal to some, the rest of the fans seem to welcome these changes and find them to be quite fun. XII's plot may be the only thing lacking in terms of a powerhouse to the already story-driven series, yet it holds enough weight all around for one to be invested enough to see things through. And although the license board is a nice way of customizing characters differently with a bit more freedom than some of the last couple of Final Fantasies, the system is stained with ridiculous micromanaging from leveling up to buying the specific armor, weapon, or ability and then having to license it before use. The game has many new additions and good marks all around, yet it also contains some bad ones which prevent it from being one of the better Final Fantasy games within the long run of the 25 year long series. Overall, I give Final Fantasy XII 3 Moogles out of 5. Wait, seriously? Who the hell wrote this?